We've been caught following closely here what is going on in Hollywood with what is now basically a complete shutdown. You have the writers and the actors out on strike. Um, so joining us now, we're really lucky to have Michelle Hurd. She's a negotiating committee member, and she's also SAG after national vice president of Los Angeles. And we're also joined by Susan Sarandon, who of course is an Academy Award-winning actress and political activist whose words have been said to be so powerful that she swayed an entire presidential election. <laughs> Ladies, great to have you both. Welcome. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for being absolutely. here. Absolutely. Um, Michelle, if you could just start by sort of yeah. laying out, you know, the status of negotiations and what are some of the key demands that you all have asked for that are not being met? Yeah. So this is really all about economics because, you know, we actors, we are laborers. <laughs> we are working class people. And this is all about fair working wages so that we can make a living to pay our rent. You know, there's a, a, a misconception of actors that we're sort of all these elitists that are living in penthouses and riding around in yachts. But I, I really want to clarify this. Um, all the TV shows that you love watching, all those different characters, those actors that you say, oh, there's that person, that guy from that show. You don't necessarily know their names. You may see me and go, that curly haired actress. You could see me do uh, three or four uh, guest stars on your favorite shows. And you're thinking, wow, that actress is working so much. You know, she's she must be feeling really good right now. In order for me to qualify for my health insurance, I need $26,000. I could do four guest spots on your favorite shows and because there's something called top of show, which the AMPTP introduced to us, it's a salary that is the minimum. We can't negotiate any higher. They say, this is what you have to take. It could be 5,000 to 8,000. I could do those four episodics in my year, and I still don't qualify for health insurance. Wow. This is, this is, this is the majority of our union. 87% of our union, which by the way, is 160,000 people, 87% don't qualify for health insurance because of these, these caps. Our caps, by the way, which are the, were the employees' contributions to the SAG After Health Plan, the uh, SAG Pension, and the uh, After Retirement Fund, are limited to episodic contributions, which haven't been raised since 1983. Wow. That's the reason why we had such a terrible thing in having people fall off their health insurance. Since 1983, you guys, that is not reflective of any kind of insurance, Tell other job, any other vocation that this happens. We've had situations where our AMPTP in this proposal have asked that uh, when background artists come to do work, they can be scanned for their one day to make an avatar of their person. That one day of work is under $200, 150 bucks. That avatar stays in their library and they can use my avatar on any show that they want any commer anything that they want in perpetuity, and I will get not one penny from that. This the the um, uh, self tape actors are paying for uh, uh, the access to audition. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, you know, I, I I could spend an hour telling you all these things. So huh. the bottom line here is that what we're doing is we're work we're fighting to have a living wage. We are pay working paycheck to paycheck. There's nothing elitist here. We're talking about fairness. And when there's billion dollars being made and we can't even make our insurance, which is just 26,000 a year to qualify, something's wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And Susan, you were talking a bit before uh, we started about how even A-listers, you have been involved in a lot of independent films, a lot of people's knowledge of Hollywood really relies on like big blockbusters. Could you give people insight into why these negotiations are key for movies that you know may not be household names, but are still vital to art and also to making sure that people in the future also get paid what's a fair wage? Well, I also want to say I have two sons, one who is an, uh, a writer, director, and the other one who's an actor. And they both went off their insurance for the longest time because even though they were working, they weren't working, making enough money for them to, again, hold on to their insurance. So, hmm. you know, we see it everywhere. Um, everybody's prices are down. Of course, you get a script, you want to do it if it's a special script. And then you say, well, maybe we could do a back end deal, you know, so that we get something at the end. But having a good property um, 
actors will always take and crews will work. There's so many things that I do that are kind of labors of love. And you hope that at the back end, you'll see something. But of course, with streaming, those deals don't really mean anything anymore because, you know, they'll take it straight and put it on a, on a, on a stream. So yeah. even though you've taken minimum, which also minimum wage is ridiculous because that's also not been touched. The basic problem is that whatever the, um, Whatever was worked out in terms of the business agreements in the 60s, whenever, obviously, they're obsolete with what has happened to the business. And there was something, I don't know, Michelle, if you want to talk about, but this yeah. paramount, what is it, this thing that that in the... Uh, that expired in 2020 in the midst of all of the pandemic and, uh, you know, uh, the, the election and everything that was going on, we weren't paying attention to this thing that expired, which changes again the business model uh, and made it more difficult. Do you, can you explain that? Because that's yeah. very well, interesting thing that I didn't know about. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember what you're referring to. I, I will say to clarify all of the... Um, the differences of what we used to have. So everybody's mm -hmm. used to linear television, right? We had 22, 24, 26 episodes. That's 10 months of work, right? So that's 10 months of work that your actor gets. Then we have residuals, which is, you know, this was a cash cow for the AMPTP. They were making hand over fist and actors were making a, 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 a sustainable living. What has been introduced to us now, which is the streaming platforms, the new media, which Sarah and, uh, Susan was literally referring to that if she does a film, maybe she does this independent film and, you know, there might be a back end, that independent film now is going to go straight to a streamer. Those platforms don't give us residuals. And this, the, the insidious thing about this new um, business plan that was forced upon actors is that we were now introduced to this concept of short series. We would be taken away, probably going to some other state that we don't live on, so we're already going to be paying us two rents. We would shoot for five months, 10 episodes. Then those streaming platforms would hold that show. You guys have seen this because you watch it, you're waiting for your favorite shows to drop. They wait till they decide to drop it, then they drop it. Then they can wait one, two, three, four years to inform me as to whether that show is going to get picked up, let alone whether I'm picked up with that show. So in that time, mm -hmm. I can't procure another uh, series regular job. I can't do something that might help my career to get me level me up. Um, what Susan was referring to, uh, instead of shows, uh, films being, you know, uh, staying in the theaters for longer, they're shortening it so that they can put it on streaming platforms. I bet you guys are always wondering, why did my favorite show get, uh, you know, just get, uh, have their final season at the third season, even though I was loving it and everybody was liking it? Our streamers basically only commit to a three season, maybe four season, because then they're going to wrap that and they want to create a new shiny show so that they can get more subscribers. They're telling mm -hmm. us that our audiences won't watch more than three seasons. We know that's not true. They also are doing that because if they go into uh, four or five seasons, then they have to pay us more syndication fees and more money and residuals. So they literally are, are working us till the till the point where they don't have to pay anymore, then scrapping us and bringing up a new shiny object to draw eyes. So does I mean, this it's all sound familiar? Because basically what you're seeing that's playing out within our world is what you're seeing everywhere. You know, Thank you. you're seeing Thank in you. every union. And it's gotten to the point now where it's so ridiculous that people have nothing to lose because yeah. it's now or never to solve these problems, right? We're not going to get right. your shot. And that's why the resolve on the part of actors and writers is so strong right now. And the UPS and teachers and, you know, all of these people that are rising up. The railroad workers should have, there. I mean, that was horrible what happened to that union because we are now even yeah. more unsafe. And it's all about changing again, the the means of how they operate in order to buy back their stock or pay their, you know, uh, not put it back into the business and not make it accessible to just give people a few days off and therefore making everything so unsafe within the, the railroads. And it's happening on all these jobs. This is what the UPS thing is about. And the Teamsters are so strong. We'll see what happens with yeah. them. I think what you're seeing, what this is a good example of, is is something that's very healthy, which is the rising up of Amazon workers, the, the, the unionization of all of these different areas where people are saying, you know, this is just impossible. This is just, that's right. it has gotten so, so huge. The, the gap between 
working people and those that control things and don't contribute to it. You know, it was pretty funny. They asked, I saw this tweet where they asked a computer, which do you feel more qualified to replace the actors or the CEOs? And the, the computers gave this response about, oh, I'm, we're much, we can easily do the CEO job. You know, <laughs> it's all about, you know, figure and survey. It's not, there's nothing human in that job, really. I hope, and, I hope they heard that. I hope those CEOs heard that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This is a double-edged sword. You know, the bubble that exists around these people that are spending their money going up in space for four minutes as opposed to what, what, what has happened to empathy? What has happened to the idea of giving your people the means to live a dignified life so they can do the best job, so that they want That's to be right. there, so that they, they're excited about working, you know, not making them super rich, but just a decent way so you can have a house and feed your family and not have to take, you know, teachers are taking three jobs. I mean, this is crazy what has happened to the working class in this country. They're just gone. And, right. uh, and I think that it's a very hopeful sign that people recognize that our first, uh, well, it was really the, the writer's first thing mm -hmm. when I went to stand with them and I stood with the miners and I stood... When they see that other unions are there, when people were speaking from all kinds of unions, and now there's a Broadway element that's that's talking, and when the Teamsters came to ours and when the students came to our, ours, this is what America was built on, if you remember. And, 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 and people died to try to get safe and fair uh, right. places to work. And I think, that's strangely, right. we're back where we were. Yeah. I think connecting all of those struggles together is so incredibly important because yeah. the, the fight for your own livelihoods is essential and compelling and important and courageous in and of itself. But you're obviously part of a larger groundswell of labor activism and labor militancy, which, you know, I frankly yeah. haven't seen in my <laughs> lifetime from the Starbucks workers unions to potentially the uh, UPS Teamsters going out on strike. You mentioned teachers. Right. I mean, there's so many actions that are happening right now. Michelle, I also wanted to get your view on uh, something that I just think it's very indicative of the uh, contempt and the sort of tactics that are leveled against workers who are trying to exercise their rights. Go ahead and put this first element up on the screen of these trees that were inexplicably, oh. aggressively I mean, trimmed right where just, the picket lines were going on. I mean, we're all suffering through this horrific heat wave. So people are already out there in these extreme temperatures, but they were at least getting a little bit of shade from these trees. And the studio yeah. goes ahead and cuts these things back to basically nothing. The city council is saying, listen, we had nothing to do with this and we didn't permit it whatsoever. You might say, all right, this is this a big deal. But I feel like this is so revealing of the type yep. of attitude and contempt that is shown towards working people. You can see the pictures here up on the screen of the book before that. and after there. It's, 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 it's so... It's horrific. It's horrific. And across the street, you know, the trees have not been touched because this is just in front of the studios. I mean, this is the same kind of people who said, let's wait till the writers get uh, um, are kicked out of their homes, right. become homeless, and then they'll come to the table. This is the these are the types of people that we are talking about. You know, you're when you have to uh, negotiate with someone who's making seventy eight thousand dollars a day and you're um, actors, 160,000, which consist of voiceover artists, singers, dancers, background artists, stunt coordinators, principal actors, are can't make 26,000 in a year. They're, this is about inhumane um, treatment. And you're absolutely right. And thank you, Susan, for bringing that up, because this is we are literally a labor union. We are fighting for all of us because that divide between corporate greed and the working per, uh, individual is so vast now that, it, you know, I, I'm sure, I, I hope some of the people have seen the article on Orange is the New Black. When that came out, everybody was like, wow, this is an amazing show. Everybody saw it, eyes were on that streaming platform. Majority of those actors did not give up their day job because they were being paid below a minimum for a weekly, series regular on a big streaming show, uh, uh, show. You know, I think Snoop Dogg uh, posted something that I thought was fabulous. He was like, I don't understand this. Show me the money. If you're having a show that's getting billions of, of uh, eyes, people watching it, how come there's no money? How come there is no money for the artist? 
The, you know, these streaming platforms, which basically came busted out about 15 years ago, they're still called new media. It's not new media. It's been here for a while. We, they have become as powerful and as popular as you know it on the backs of writers, of actors, of the creatives. If it wasn't for the creatives, if the, we are the engine of that car. If we weren't there, there would be no streaming platforms. If we could just get 2%, 1% of the revenue profits, our unions would be so solid. Those 87% of our members who haven't qualified for um, health insurance, 98% of our 160,000 members work below the minimums. If we had that 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 little bite, that tiny little you know nibble of the revenue shares, our, our all of our unions would be solid. Our health insurance would be stronger. Um, you know, our our sets would be more respected. You know, when you're talking to people who are making billions of dollars and we're just a a tiny bit of their portfolio, I think that there's a, a disconnect between humanity and what is right and what is wrong. And these people seem yeah. to be holding and tight to what is wrong. You have to remember too that when a show is filming, you're you're, yes. you're connected yes. to a community that's making food and putting people up and travel. That's right. And it's you know, it it it's like you pitch your tent and it's affecting a lot of people, not just the actors. I mean, right. you've got the crew members, but you've also got the outreach into the community that's supporting the a film, no matter where it's made, you know, it's bringing yeah. revenue in. So now that's all stopped too. Everything that's connected. I can't go to the uh, opening of my film mid-August. That would have been a big thing that was going on in LA that affected everybody, hotels, you, you know, uh, yeah. all kinds of services during Crazy, the you know what? Three months here, three months there in a, in a small town in New Jersey. They, you don't think that that, you know, the local guy making us sandwiches was affected by that? So exactly every state that we go to, we, we have a we have a huge outreach to the, you know, every state we come to dry cleaners, you know, street clean. I mean, it's it's ex it, it, I think people don't realize how long the tentacles are when a production mm -hmm. comes to your your, your state. Um, you know, I think there was also, just because I have to drill it in, um, during the uh, WGA strike, I think, I wonder if people saw that uh, uh, tweet or article that the Netflix CEOs were still asking for their bonuses, even during the WGA strike, and we mm. were able to find out those uh, funds. So those bonuses for CEOs were like 15 million, 17 million, 10 million, 14 million, on top of their multi-million dollar salaries. Now that cobbled together for just this, that one streamer or just Netflix, those CEOs would have been about $168 million. The contract that the WGA was requesting that would make their entire union solvent, that would help all those WGA um, writers be able to live and pay their rent and take care of their children and, and pay, you know, put food on their table was 60 million. Wow. Where do you, where can you find that money? Wow. I think we can just that where we can mm. find right in the money. bonuses. Well said, Susan. Let me let me ask you one last question, which is, you know, you and I uh, share a lot of political perspective. Um, you know, we have a, a, a very similar ideology, and you know, you don't always see uh, actors in Hollywood really speaking out on behalf of labor, and it would be incredibly powerful, and it is incredibly powerful right now to see names with huge cultural power and cachet you know, really talking about corporate greed, really talking about the struggles of working people. Do you think that after the strike is over, you'll continue to see some of that energy from Hollywood with regards to other labor struggles across the country, the type that you routinely support? I hope so. I mean, I think that um, it, 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 I, I think that it's taken a bit for a lot of people in my business to understand what a union means and that they're in a union until something like this happens. You know, mm. I do remember that there when there was the long strike that had to do with commercials and they called in some more visible people like us and, you know, to explaining to people that you can't cross a picket line was something that they hadn't really understood and that you should never cross a picket line, whether or not it's hotel workers or whatever this lack of knowledge about your history feeds into this too, you know, mm -hmm. and, and also you don't see in mainstream media 
a lot of the uprising of the middle class or the working class in other countries. You know, that has really played down. So this, they don't even want you to, to imagine. And, and you can't mm. really expect change unless you can imagine that there's something different. This is where artists have their strength. You know, we want to give you stories. We want to give you examples of people who become the protagonist in their own life and who make a difference in their circumstances by just demanding what really is due them. And I think it's, you know, I saw on Bernie's campaign when talking about healthcare, what needed to be done to change the language of that because we've been in such a terrible relationship, uh, you know, where we were, nobody thought they deserved healthcare. That was something that other people had. So I think mm -hmm. that all of these concepts now, and this is an example where you're saying, no, you know, when people say, oh, nobody wants to work, that pisses me off so bad because basically <laughs> what you're saying is you don't want to pay them. People don't want to pay, uh, don't want to be in jobs anymore where they're working for slave wages and treated badly and have ridiculous hours and aren't safe. Yeah, they learned during yeah. COVID. They were supposed to be special and supposed to be, you know, taken care of in order to make the other people's lives go smoothly. And then bam, the middle of the, the moment that's over with, they're dispensable. Yeah, you know, I'm right. sorry, but that's not, you know, I, I yeah. hope that it's an awakening and I hope that the members of my union, now that they've been activated, understand uh, that we have to look out for everybody. This is where our strength comes from. This is the, as again, okay. this is what the basis of America uh, moving forward came from all the changes that stopped child labor and gave us a 40 hour work week and all of these things. That's how that happened. It's never going to be the top giving up power. It's going to yeah. always have to be that, you know, and, and when you stand up for your teamster driver or your taxi driver or the person that's right. working in the hotel, when you show up there, they're so grateful and I was so grateful on our one of our earlier uh, demonstrations to look around and have people speaking and see the students, you know, there and Broadway there. And this was before we went out and the Teamsters saying, we're going to be there for you. This is, I mean, this moves you to see that kind yeah. of, we've been too isolated. The thing that Americans just do not want to ever talk about, and I've had this come up in press for films that I've done, is class. They yeah. don't. You know, they distract with all these other cultural things that don't affect uh, affect a small portion of the population. But they don't want to really look at the, what's going on in this in in the way our lives are structured, which is all about class mm -hmm. and this part getting super, super, super rich, and then this part getting less and less and less viable. Right. Well, well ladies, right. you are both extraordinary. We're Really grateful for both of you taking the time out. And I hope you'll come back and keep us updated as things progress. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Thank you guys you. for having us on. And also maybe we'll give you what, maybe you could run something that just says the fund that you can contribute to if sure. anybody We'll wants put the link to. in the yeah. description. That yeah, would that'd be, be Yes, please. Yes. Please do send SAG us that and we'll put it, yeah, the put SAG it in the after, description. SAG after. Yeah, sagafterfoundation.org would be awesome. It'll help with emergency assistance for all of our members because you know that a, a bunch of our 160,000 members are going to be hurting in these next couple of weeks. This is going to go on for quite a while. Happy There's to no, uh, happy to support so, you. They're not even talking about the core issues. They refuse to even talk. So they're yes, just they, they literally drag everybody loses yeah. their houses and can't eat. So we need yeah, the, to keep everyone afloat. Yeah, like what she, Susan said, they literally dragged their feet in our negotiations. It was uh, so disrespectful, so disrespectful. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, ladies, like I said, keep us updated. Um, everybody, we will have that link in the description. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for the time. Good to see you. Our pleasure. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.